This is the courtroom of Judge Frank Capria, where people and cases are met with compassion. A different kind of judge. A courtroom like no other. This is Caught in Providence. Vincenzo Femmia. <clears throat> Vincenzo. Yes, sir. Yes, what, Your Honor. What do your friends call you? They call you Vincenzo or they call you Vincent? Vincent. Or oh, Vinny? Vincent. 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 Very formal. They don't call you no. Vinny or anything like that. Only my mother. Your mother, what she call you? Fadenda. Fadenda. Oh, you don't know what that means. No, but uh, I'm sure that's a. Uh, <laughs> it's a term of endearment, Your Honor. But they usually, when they say for then, they stick their hand in and go like this. Yes. For then, right? Yes. This is a very interesting police report. This is the first police report that I've seen a person being accused of what you were being accused of. Here's what they accused you of being. Police report says that at this establishment that they were made aware of a subject being distrustful. <laughs> I think they meant to say disturbing, mm. right? But they accused you of being distrustful. So we're going to get the uh, lie detector test and put you on the test to see if he's distrustful or not. Inspector Quinn, what charge is this being distrustful? How do you do it, Judge? <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, I had a chance to speak to the officer at the scene there uh, regarding this incident. And, uh, well, how does he know he was being distrustful? I don't well, I, I don't. I, I agree with you. I think you're, uh, the officer might just say either disrespectful or unruly at the time. Right. But uh, he also explained that the... Uh, this gentleman here was not uh, the main reason behind the big disturbance, so that's why the city moves to dismiss without prejudice. For your information, I, I already wrote dismissed on this okay. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I read he was going to be distrustful. All right. It was an uneventful uh, situation it as was. far as you were concerned. It was a misunderstood between me and the police officer, too. Yeah. Because I think he was having a bad night and... Uh, Vicenzo, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Wait, listen to me. All right. There have been many people in this courtroom who have said nothing and were on the verge of having their case dismissed. And then they started talking. And by the time they finished talking, their case wasn't dismissed. Okay. Now, there's such a thing called the Fifth Amendment. Do you know what the Fifth Amendment is? Yes. All right. If I, I take the Fifth. If I were you. <laughs> <laughs> if I were you, I would remember that. All right. Is there anything you want to say? No. Oh, good. Here you go. <laughs> All right, yeah. the matter is dismissed. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Your Good luck to you. I'm going to give you three choices. I'm going to one, two, and three, okay? What number? Five. Ticket was issued 959 and 58 seconds, and you can't park there until 10 o'clock. Good morning. Chelsea, you're from uh, Massachusetts, are you? Yeah. According to our records, you've been getting parking tickets since 2014, so you've been here for a couple of years, I think. We go back and forth. Um, my, my boyfriend, his dad, lives in Rhode Island. You have six tickets. Okay. These tickets were not paid. As a result of the tickets not being paid, the car was booted. Right. After it was booted, you didn't come to court, the car got towed. Right. I was in New York. My stepdad passed away. You were in New York when the car got booted? Um, the day after I left for New York. So um, you knew you knew when the car got booted? Yeah, my friend, yeah. And you just left it there? I had, I had to go. Oh, what about your boyfriend? He, uh, he doesn't take responsibility for this? I didn't know this? that he could come for me. Oh. Well, I mean, you know what you're facing now. You're facing a boot fee. Mm -hmm. You're facing parking tickets. And then you can't get, not that you can't, but we will release the car if you make a substantial payment. Then you have to deal with the tow company. So you've got three days of storage plus a tow bill that's going to be close to $100 plus the storage. Mm -hmm. What's the little guy's name? Armani. Armani? Armani, come up here. Come up here. Come this way. Do you have a picture? Yeah. How old are you? Three. Three? Three years old. And what is your name? Amani. Amani? Have you had breakfast yet? You did? Oh, that's good. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> well, that means I don't have to give your mommy a break to buy you breakfast because you already had breakfast, huh? <laughs> right? So I don't have to give her a break, right? No. Okay. <laughs> so we're off to a good start. He's, he's, a, gov he's, a, uh, he's a company man. <laughs> okay. 
Now I have to make a big decision here. Should I? Um, you're going to help me out. Right now. I'm going to give you three choices. I'm going to, one, two, and three. Okay? You listening? All right. So one is that I charge your mom six hundred and ninety-five dollars, which is what she's supposed to pay. Two, four ninety-five, and three, three hundred and fifteen. What number? Five. Five. No, we don't have a five. It's either number one, two, or three. So is it one, two, or three? Give me a number. One, two, or three. 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 Oh. <laughs> He's a company man. <laughs> okay, I really needed your help, so I appreciate that. Okay, if I get if I get stuck again, will you come up and help me? Okay, I look forward to that. All right, you have a good day. Bye bye. Judge, he was wiser than his years. He saw how the math was going down. He goes, if I hold out to five, we might do better, Mom. <laughs> okay, it's $215 for the tickets and a $100 boot fee, so it's $315. Okay, good luck to you. Sarah Heeman. Sarah, you have a, one ticket on Cushing Street, no parking, 8 to 10. Correct. Are you were there at, oh, no. Not the one I, I literally pulled up at 9.58. Ticket was issued at 9.59. Uh, I was right. 9.59 and 58 seconds. And you can't park there until 10 o'clock. And you violated the city ordinances. These are the city ordinances, Inspector Quinn, that she violated. That point, that point two will get you every time, Judge. And our parking enforcement officers are second to none in the country. So what do you want to tell me about this? Taking this wrong, I, wrong path in life. My car clock said 10. Oh, now you're blaming the car clock. Oh, see? I'm sorry, Judge. She's blaming the clock on her car. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand in this case? Is this uh, jail? 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock, Judge. 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock. My father told me that growing up. Yeah. <laughs> I think 9.59 is close enough to 10. <laughs> Matt is dismissed. Thank you. Good luck. Alnado Minea. Good morning. Morning, sir. Your child's going through a red light on Admirals and Harris. Okay, what do you want to tell me about this, sir? In that location, it's like mad lights. I was confused. Like, but I, w I was guilty. You're guilty? Yeah. And you're... <laughs> but it was at, at that section right there, it's Atwell's, and that got mad, like, lights, and I was confused. You got confused? Yes. Uh, tell me, why were you confused? Because it was too many, too many lights. You let me tell you why you were confused. Because there were two lanes of traffic. They're heading west on Atwell's Avenue. And in those two lanes of traffic, there were green lights for both lanes of traffic. Okay. However, in the third lane of traffic, which is heading east, there's another light with an arrow. And that light turns red when you can't make a left-hand turn. So you're coming down, and you see, in, in your lane of traffic, you see a green light. In the other lane of traffic, which is not your lane of traffic, there's an arrow with a red light saying you can't make a left-hand turn. That's where you got confused. Is that right? Yes, sir. Beautiful explanation. <laughs> see, I knew you'd get it straight. I just knew. I knew you had it in you. And I'm going to tell you something else that's going to surprise you. Do you want to get surprised? Yes, sir. I agree with you that it is confusing. And I think that the traffic engineer, whether it be state or city, should straighten it out. Because in your lane of traffic, there's a green light. In the other lane of traffic, which is not your lane, there's a red arrow. So uh, I don't think the city can prevail on the burden of proof, which is clear and convincing evidence. You agree with that? Yes, sir. See, I knew. He had a great argument. <laughs> he came in well prepared today. 
I agree. It is confusing. <laughs> All right. The matter is dismissed. Thank you. You wear a Blunt Masters T-shirt to court? That tells me there may be more to the confusion than just the mad lights. Giselle Lama. Good morning. Who's this young fellow with you? This huh, is that your lawyer? Yes. You brought your lawyer to court this morning? <laughs> Giselle, your motor vehicle has been booted. Mm -hmm. You have nine unpaid violations. Two of them are red lights, and seven are parking tickets. Okay. Are you, did you know that? I'm not the owner of the vehicle, um, but so we. I'm not sure if all the tickets are mine. I, would you say that again, please? So, I didn't hear um, you. I'm not the owner of the vehicle. It's my um, kid's father. Mm -hmm. We share it sometimes, so some of the tickets might have been when he had the car or me. I'm not sure. I, I don't have the money to pay it all, so I just maybe to set up it somehow to pay it um, in small increments. Mm. You have a boot on your vehicle, and you have $1,100 worth of tickets with the penalties. Now, I know that if I don't release the boot, that the car will get towed. Mm -hmm. And then if the car gets towed, then the tow company will charge you about $100 to tow the car. And then they'll, if you don't redeem the car, then they will charge you $30 a day for storage. So effectively, I would take you off the road. You probably wouldn't be able to get your car back. So that's what I'm confronted with, and I'm looking at this little guy, and I say to myself, am I going to do that to him? Hmm? Look at him. <laughs> Plus, he had to get up early this morning to come here. You're tired. I'm sorry. He's tired. <laughs> I know. I think I need some help on this case. We have, um, we have a guest today that I'm going to introduce you to. It's... Uh, Miss Rhode Island USA 2017 is with us this morning. It's uh, Kelsey Swanson. So Kelsey, you want to come up here and help me out with this case? Come on. Thank you. Okay. Well, you've been you've been judged, and you want a title by being judged. I'm going to help you. I'm going to make you a judge this morning. How's that? All right. All right. So far, Giselle has two red lights tickets dismissed. So that's going to help you a great deal, Giselle. Okay. Yeah. That means you have seven parking tickets. So, okay, I'm gonna leave this to you. I, I can do three things. Number one is I can charge her $900. Number two is <clears throat> I can probably charge her somewhere around $700. Or number three is I can charge her $210 for the tickets and a $100 boot fee. So it's either 900, 700, or it's 300. It's a very perplexing problem. <clears throat> I know you're not used to being a judge, you're used to being judged. So what are you gonna to recommend to me? I think number three, $210 and $100 for the boot. Plus she has a cute kid. She, with ni she has a cute kid with nice shoes. <laughs> who's, who's kissing her? Okay, well, I asked for her, so I guess I'll have to abide by her recommendation. Okay, so it's going to cost you $310. Thank All right. you. How much of that can you pay today? Um, I think I have like 200 now. Okay, one month to pay the balance. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. Bye. Mayha. You have one ticket on Washington <coughs> Eborn Street. What do you want to tell me about this? Well, my wife and I went into a restaurant there. I forgot what it's called, but it used to be called Cuban Revolution. What's it called? It used to be called Cuban Revolution. It's got a new name now. I forgot. And so we went in, and there was a sign that said, uh, um, uh, parking until 5. And so we parked. We came out. It was probably 5.10. And I saw a ticket. And I was like, whoa, OK. But then I looked at the ticket, and it said $100 tow zone. And I'm looking around to see, like, where's the sign that says tow zone? And then I, then I realized that facing in the opposite direction, there's a sign that said valet parking after 5. It didn't say tow zone. Well, I'm not concerned about the valet. Yeah. The threshold issue for me is whether or not there was a sign that said tow zone. I, there wasn't. There wasn't. There was a sign that said valet parking. Valet. But it didn't say tow zone. 
I'm not really sure what the criteria is for having a valet spot. I mean, those are, some restaurants have a no parking valet. Other restaurants don't have no parking valet, so I'm not sure. But I'm certainly not going to charge you $100 for parking in a valet spot. Thank you. Did you leave a big tip in the restaurant? Did, yeah. You did, huh? <laughs> We're celebrating because I just had a heart attack, and so we went out to celebrate that I wasn't dead. You celebrated, <laughs> you celebrated the heart attack or you celebrated the recovery? Well, celebrate surviving the you heart attack. You celebrated the recovery. Yeah, okay. Right. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether she was celebrating the heart attack. No. I don't know. No. no. <laughs> so you're going to issue the ticket. You might have a second one, and we'll be able to celebrate later on tonight. <laughs> All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Right. Ceremony, is it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you have two tickets, one on meeting and one on Washington Street. One's a loading zone and one's a parking meter. Is there anything you want to tell me about this? The loading zone ticket, there was no sign that said there was loading zone. Is that where you were parked? Oh, yes. Yes. There were two signs. One says four-hour parking, one says two-hour parking. Right, and nowhere does it say it was a loading zone. And then even down the street, even the, all the way down the street, there's no sign that says loading zone. So I didn't even notice that, it, that the ticket was for a loading zone. I thought it was for the meter. And then when I looked at the ticket, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's not, there's not even a loading zone over there sign. Well, what do you think happened? I think there was just no sign, and it's just understood that it's supposed to be a loading zone. That's what I think. You think maybe the parking enforcement officer couldn't read? No, I think they just know that that's a loading zone, and, and I didn't know. How can they know? There's no sign that says loading zone. Well, I think it's the area. <laughs> There's two signs. One says four-hour parking that way. The other says two-hour parking that way, and you're parked there. I know. I can't figure it out. It's I'm, confusing I'm, I'm, to me, I'm looking too. for assistance, because some of these cases are so perplexing, they're well beyond my pay grade. I, I, I agree, so, but I can't help you. You can't help me? No, because okay. I, I don't know. Well, you know, give everybody else in my life. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a parking meter on Washington Street. Did you see when that's from? 2012. I didn't even know about it. It's going to cost you $30. Good luck. Good morning, Pamela. Hi. First off, the um, ticket, there was no signs that I couldn't park to the corner. And also, I work with people with disabilities, and all I did is walk the girl into the florist shop and came out, and which I do every week. And for some reason, that one day, I got a ticket. Because you failed to uh, meet your obligation when you come into Providence. You're from Warwick. Yes. Yeah. Did you, don't you know about the rules when you come into Providence? You don't know about the rules? Some of them. <laughs> Do you know what this book is? <laughs> yeah. The, what is it? Probably all violations. These are the city ordinances for Providence. OK. And <laughs> one of the city ordinances is that you cannot park 25 feet to the corner. Before you commit to Providence, you have to buy this book and read it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and then you would know that. But you didn't buy the book. No, I didn't. Oh, well, no. OK. All right, Pamela, it's a city ordinance. Everyone's charged with knowing the city ordinances. I know you didn't know. Okay. No, so what do I do if I'm dropping someone off? I can't. No, based on the circumstances, as you have explained them to me, that you deal with people with disabilities and you, had, and you were walking someone into a facility, I'm going to dismiss it. Thank you. Okay. Keep up your good work. Thank you. Occasionally, people come in and they overshare their experiences. The next case is a classic case of oversharing. Mm. Lori Graham. I'd like to explain something, if I may. Sure. I'm an Uber driver. Yeah. And that evening, Uber wanted people to stay on the app because there were big parties, something going on. I'm at the corner of Elmet and Arch. So there's a line that we can just pull up in front of our door. And I had to use the restroom really bad. So I parked, ran in, used my restroom, and I'm coming in and out all night. But that particular time, I had to use the bathroom. And I parked, ran in the house, come out, I get a ticket. But I wasn't staying there all night. I, I was Ubering. That's why I came, so I can explain. I wasn't then going to be out there all night. But at that time, I had to use the bathroom. I don't like public bathrooms. 
that time of night, nothing was open. And once I dropped the Uber driver off, who was intoxicated, I probably saved his life so he didn't drive drunk. And I pulled in, ran in the house, used the bathroom. Thank you. You give me four bathrooms in that, in that explanation. You used the bathroom four times. No, I mean, I mean, I used. You just want to make sure. You just want to make sure I understood. Yeah, I just used the bathroom to, to, to make sure when I go back out on my runs, I didn't have to use the restroom no more. Six. Because you know, older people got to use the restroom a lot. Seven. Oh, oh my God. You got a call. No, All right, go I, take it. Now take the call. I, no, I, I, it's an Uber app, and I didn't mean to have it on. No, keep it. It's all right. Keep it on and get, pick it up. I'll let you out in a minute, so you can, you can make some money. Yes. Go take it. Yeah, I did. I just hit it. I have to navigate now and get out of here. All right. I never get tickets anymore. I, I've seen you years ago with my kids. Worry, I, get, my I got it. I have it. I okay. popped. I understand right, that. You're working. You're trying to make some money. You have a, you have a, a child in college? No, I'm a college student. You're a college five student. More, five more classes. I graduate from CCRI. All right. God love you. Keep up the good work. Thank All you, right. sir. And I'm going to dismiss the ticket. I believe your story. Yeah. All right. But you know what? Now, if I do any night driving, I'll just pull in my parking lot and use the bathroom on the other side. That's eight times. Eight bathrooms you've had so far. Thank you. Okay. Donna Day Camps, this is a red light on Roger Williams Avenue and Elmwood Avenue. Okay, the motor's discharged with making a right-hand turn where right-hand turn is prohibited. What do you want to tell me, Donna? I just think with that sign move, being moved so much, the motorists just are very confused, especially if you don't live in the area, too. Oh, you have to live in the area to read the sign? I don't know. Those camera people are out there every weekend doing something across the street right there at that white pole on, oh. right on the grass <clears throat> there. That's not the issue. You said you don't live in the area. I've been there 28 years. Oh, you live in the area? 28 years. Oh, we should know better. Well, can't teach an old dog new tricks. I'm getting old. <clears throat> I watch it now, though. You're obsessed with being old. You first of you called yourself old. Now you're calling yourself, <laughs> a, old. Now you're calling yourself an old dog. If I did that, I'd get thrown off the bench. <laughs> Tenured. You'd be tenured, Judge. Oh. Tenured, yeah. I got seniority in the neighborhood. <laughs> <clears throat> I think the sign says you have to come to a complete stop, right? It's right hand turn after stop. Yeah, yeah but how long? It just came oh, to I'm, life. I apologize, Donna. Donna. <laughs> Donna, what I thought you were going to say was, I thought you were going to say, I came to a stop. Because if I look at it, you, I think you came to a sufficient stop. I did, stop. and then I made the right. But you didn't say that. You gave me all this other stuff. I'm from <laughs> yeah, the neighborhood. I'm not from the neighborhood. The sign. <laughs> I'm an old dog. I'm a young dog. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a very narrow issue here. The issue uh -huh. is, did you come to a stop? Yes, I did. Sufficient. Let's look at it again. I can't see the sign. Uh-uh. You came to a stop. I'm going to dismiss it. Thank you. Juan Rosario. Buena, como esta? Dame un momentito, por favor. Mr. Rosario is charged with parking in a tow zone on Pine Street. El ticket se lo dieron por parquearse en un área de 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 descarga. Ay no, yo 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 le yo le eché dinero y no no lo no lo vi. He he said he put um, money in a meter. It was it was a tow zone. Era un área de 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 grúa. Yo yo sé pero que no no lo no lo vi el sign. He didn't see the sign. <laughs> And he didn't put money in the meter either. No, yo me fui por atrás, fue. Yo me fui por atrás. Y el meter estaba adelante. I know he's got a handicap certificate. It does not allow him to park in a tow zone. I'm going to reduce the fine from $100 to $20. Okay. Se lo redujo a $20. Okay. Thank you. See how fast he learned how to speak English? See? Good for you. Hello, good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Mr. Saki, you are charged with disorderly conduct. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to know that you have the right to be represented by an attorney. You have the presumption of innocence. You have the right to have the city prove each and every allegation beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to present witnesses on your own behalf and you have the right 
to cross-examine witnesses who may testify against you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And you have the right against self-incrimination, which means you don't have to say anything. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand, sir. Okay. Can you afford an attorney? I can afford okay. an attorney. I notice, sir, you are not from Rhode Island? That's correct, sir. All right. Do you work here? Um, I was hired to DJ at Lupo's for a night. But I'm going to tell you what the police say, okay? Okay. The police were on detail at about 2 o'clock in the morning at Lupo's nightclub, and a Joseph Stocky was kicked out of the nightclub for attempting to fight a bouncer. Once he removed from the nightclub, he became increasingly aggressive toward police. Mr. Stocky began screaming and threatening police as well as nightclub employees. He raised his voice several times in an attempt to gather a crowd. At this time, he was placed in custody, charged with disorderly conduct. <clears throat> Is there anything you want to say about that? You um, understand you have the right against self-incrimination. You don't have to say anything. You understand no, that? I'd like to say something on my behalf. I mean, I'll speak loudly and slowly so I hear you. Okay, so I was DJing at Lupo's. I drove eight hours to DJ, and it was last call. So I went to the bar, and I tried to get two females a drink that I was there with, and the bartender told me, no, it's last call. I'm not, like, serving any more drinks. So I walked to the other side of the club because there was two bars in the club, and um, I asked that bartender for drinks, and he said, sure. But the other bartender came over to the other side of the bar and he said, no, I already told this kid he can't have any drinks. So I was like, what's the problem? And he was like, get him out of here. And they throw me out. And then I tried to get back into the establishment so I could talk to the promoter so I could get paid for my DJ services. But everyone wanted me off the property. And then I did have an infantile reaction to the situation. Oh, you were the DJ? Yes. Oh, did you ever get paid? No. To this day, you still haven't been paid? No. Huh. How many drinks did you have that night? Um, I was a little tipsy, for sure, and that played a role. I knew that as soon as I read the report. We have what we call alcoholic muscles down here. Yes. I read the report. I looked at you, and I read the report, and it said that Mr. Stocky wanted to fight one of the bouncers. It's been my experience. The bouncers are always, you know, they're over six feet. They have... To, they're muscular, right? And you wanted to fight the bouncer. I'm it not didn't sure. go well. If you got a good left hook, I'm not sure, right? But I don't think that was a good idea. No. What do you think, Inspector Quinn? It was not a good idea. <laughs> was the bouncer bigger than Inspector Quinn? About the same size. Yeah. You, you think oh. you can take him? Well, who not knows, well. Judge? Judge, now who knows? I don't know. That. <laughs> Inspector Quinn, you must have a recommendation on this matter. I do, Your Honor. I, uh, based on uh, no previous history with police, the one charge he did have was uh, dismissed with president. Uh, the city will offer a six-month filing with a $35 court cost on a NOLO plea, or uh, naturally he can come back for trial. Inspector Quinn, I, I would say that 99% of the time that I, uh, I accept your recommendation, and, I, and usually we're on the same wavelength, but I think given the circumstances of this case, he was working there. He didn't threaten anybody. Nobody was placed any danger. It was all verbal. He just ran in his mouth. He had a few drinks and he ran in his mouth. And while words alone don't constitute an assault, they don't constitute an offense, was, even though words may be offensive, they really don't constitute an offense. So he didn't get paid. He got banged around. He spent the night in jail. I think you've been punished enough. Thank you, Your Honor. Lillian Escobar. Good afternoon. <laughs> Lillian, you have one speeding ticket on Mount Pleasant Avenue. I do. You want to tell me anything about this? Uh, yeah, first I drive down the street three times per day, each day to drop them off at school. That day, uh, the nurse from her school called me saying that she was throwing up and she wasn't feeling good, she had a fever. And I was, I was not thinking straight, I was just trying to get to school and that's why I, I got the ticket, I know. I don't have it with me, um, but yeah. What's your name? Valerie. Come up here. <laughs> 
Okay, tell us your name again. Valerie. And you're in the fourth grade? Yep. Yes. Yes, sir. See, she's smart. And what is your favorite subject? Math. Math. Now, do you ever think of what you want to do when you get older, when you graduate from college? I want to be an engineer. Wow, she's very smart. Now, your mom is charged with speeding, and a machine caught her with speeding on Mount, on Mount Pleasant Avenue. Okay. You're going to be a judge for about a minute, okay? Okay, is your mom guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Not guilty? We have all this evidence here. She's not guilty because she, she drives really good, and she doesn't... She doesn't um, Text while I drive, and she's really careful. At all times? At all times. And so this had to be like an isolated incident in her life? Yeah. Because okay, no, this is not something she does ordinarily, right? Mm hmm And you can attest to that because you're in the car a lot with her. Yes. Okay. And if she ever became reckless, you would tell her, wouldn't you? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm a, she's very impressive, this young girl. She's going to be a great scientist. And if... <laughs> If you ever change your mind, you might be a great lawyer as well. <laughs> well, it's nice meeting you. It's nice meeting you, too. <laughs> Taking all those factors into consideration, the matter will be dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. Michael Romano. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Judge. How are you? Okay, you have three tickets. Oh, uh, one right here on West Fountain Street. And one on Way Boston Street and one on Blackstone Street. What do you want to tell me about this? Can't really say much, Your Honor. You don't want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to say a word, huh? Looks like an honest nope. guy, Inspector Quinn. What do you think? Oh, played the fifth three feet before he got to the mic, so yeah, of course he's honest. He played the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, in the police academy, they took. He's entitled not oh, to speak. Not only does he have freedom of speech, he owes the freedom not to speak. <laughs> and he's decided to exercise his freedom not to speak. <laughs> because he was taught when he was a kid that silence is golden, right? Correct. See? He knows. Man. All right. Silence also leads to an $85 fine. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Clearly, this gentleman didn't come to court to fight his ticket. I think he just wanted to get out of the house. And who could blame him? We're the best show in town. Come on down. Karen, you have two uh, registrations. One is a Toyota, and the other is a Lexus. Yes. OK. Yeah. We're going to take the Toyota first. On the Toyota, you have six parking tickets. So there was this, a car that I bought my son. And unbeknownst to me, he was getting these tickets. And now he works in Boston. And I'm here to clean house for my son. <laughs> You're here doing what mothers do. That's what you're what doing. What mothers do, I guess. Right. So I, I see it every day. I know. And I understand your situation as well. Your son's working in Boston. You're not going to let him take time out of work. right? You're going to come up and face the music on his behalf. So what are you asking me to do on those parking tickets? Um. Hmm. You're asking me to do um? <laughs> What's um? That's short for please help. My decision, please help. My decision is um. My son should really be here, you know, to represent himself, but I... You want to call him? I will, if you want me to. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> I can see the wheels turning, Inspector mm -hmm. Quinn, right? She's, she's saying I mean, to herself, what does the judge want to hear? What can I tell him that I can get a break yeah. on this? What it wasn't he like he was parked in a wrong place. He was parked legally. It's just that, I guess, the amount of coins that he put in, he couldn't put any more in. Oh, so it's, it's the... He, was, like, yeah, he would so, go in and they'd have yeah, meetings uh, in the right. morning. It's, it's the U.S. Treasury's fault. They don't have enough coins. <laughs> Right? And then it's not it, your son's fault. It can't be your son's fault. It's the U.S. Treasury, Inspector Quinn. <laughs> oh, God. All right. It's going to be $125 for the tickets. Now, call your son and tell him he owes you $125. Are you a Beatles fan? Yeah. You are? What's your favorite Beatles song? Speak into the mic. I saw Ringo Starr June 15th. You saw Ringo Starr? Yeah? Is that your favorite Beatles? What's your favorite Beatles song? I don't have a fa favorite. I like them all. You know? Yeah? Okay. 
And you're still carrying the torch, huh? You still got the, the Beatles jersey on. Yeah? Very interesting. Yeah, I seen Paul McCartney in concert, too. You did? This really doesn't mean anything, but I was uh, uh, on vacation last year, and I was invited out to dinner at a, a well, friend's house who lives, lives in Palm Beach. And so we went in, and the place was just unbelievable. It was on the water, and it was a beautiful place. Uh, I don't know how many square feet. It had to be maybe 20,000 square feet. It just was magnificent. And, again, and having dinner, we just got talking and said, how long have you owned the house? And to make a long story short, he bought the house from Yoko Ono. Oh, cool. Right after John Lennon uh, died. And uh, that was where Lennon lived with his wife, with Yoko and his son. And he said that last year, just this last year, he got a call from Yoko Ono saying, my son would like to see the house that he lived in when he was a young youngster. And so they did actually allow them to go through the house. So so talking about the beers, that was just my, my piece of history with the Beatles, right? That I had, di had dinner in the house where John Lennon uh, lived. However, that's not going to help you with the parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. Your child's were parking 25 feet to the corner. So what do you want to tell me about this? <coughs> didn't, didn't have a sign there. Okay, it's thirty dollars. See the clerk. Mr. Ortiz, you have one ticket on Francis Street. Was this outside the mall? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> I just got a job at Domino's. You know, you got a job, job where? Uh, I started working at Domino's as my first job ever, and um, you know, I'm getting used to the new rules and stuff. It's only like my third week there. So, um, you know, I got delivered to, send a, to um, deliver pizza to the Providence Place Mall. And, um, you know, there's nothing else to say. I, I didn't know I was in a, I was in a tow, tow parking zone. And, um, you know, I, 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 don't know, I seen the ticket, right? And I was, I was surprised. I was like, Jesus. Are you still delivering pizza? Yes, I am. And you're working for Domino's? Yes. It's your I first do. job? Yes. And you were, were you actually delivering pizza to an establish to a business at the mall? It was, well, it, it wasn't a business. I'm, I'm not sure if somebody from there worked there yeah. and they ordered pizza. Yeah. And, you know, um, I went and delivered uh, the pizza. <laughs> give me a good tip. Uh, it was $2. It ain't too bad. It ain't too bad. They gave you a $2 tip. Yeah. <laughs> you got a $100 ticket. You got a $2 tip. That yeah. doesn't make sense. You have, to, you have to make 50 runs there to pay for the ticket. <laughs> Basically, I worked that day for free because I ended up getting like a hundred dollar tips total throughout the day. So, <laughs> Inspector Quinn, yes, wrong. The pizza guy. First day on the job, he's trying to make a. He, he's working delivering pizza, killing himself. He gets a hundred dollar ticket. I don't have the heart to charge and him. He, I, I just don't. I, I, he comes here tonight with nothing in his hands. I just. <laughs> If you brought Inspector Quinn a little pepperoni, you know, pepperoni and cheese, you might, he might have, he might have made a recommendation that I give you a break, you know. Yeah. But even though you didn't do that, I, I can't, I don't have, in me to charge you. I just Thank don't. Thank you so much. Poor guy gets a job, first day on the job, he's all excited. I'm going to go down, I'm going to yeah. deliver the pizza down to the province place mall. He parks in front, he runs in, he gets a $2 tip, right? Come on. Yeah, the tip wasn't, wasn't too And he goes to outside go. and he's got a hundred dollar ticket. <laughs> Oscar, you're free. Thank you so much, Judge. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good day, all right? Good morning. I'm here representing my daughter Jennifer. Jennifer's charged with parking in in the appointed park. Right. <clears throat> what did Jennifer tell you about this? Well, I'll explain to you what happened. Five days prior to this parking violation, she had a flat tire on 95 South. It was changed and her spare was put on. On the evening of the 8th, she left work and she got another flat tire. She, it was pitch dark. She didn't see any signs that said no overnight parking. And it was towed to the tire warehouse where she went and had all four tires put on due to the fact she didn't want to go through this again since it happened twice in one week. She, um, there was no parking ticket on the windshield or on the car. It wasn't until the 28th of February that she received this. 
Now, she's a tax auditor for a CPA firm in Providence, and they're not allowed to take time out of work until the 20th of April. She called the office here three times and told them that she couldn't make this uh, 16th, but nobody ever told her somebody could come here and represent her. It wasn't until last week when she was sent to collections for this ticket that I called and they said, oh, well, you can come represent her. So. Well, you did a good job. Huh? <clears throat> you did a good job. Well, <clears throat> hey, that's my job. <laughs> But what do you mean that's your job? To be a, huh? you're, not, you're not an attorney. No, I'm not an attorney. That's what I meant. I mean, you're doing a, you're doing a better job than most of the attorneys. They usually stumble on this. Inspector <laughs> Quinn, did you analyze the uh, uh, yes, I did, your documentation that was submitted? Yes, I did. Is it a forgery? And, uh, the problem is, sir, that the police officer should have seen that the car wasn't parked there on purpose, that it was disabled because it couldn't be moved. Now, see, you were doing a good job. Okay. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Yes. I'm going to tell you what they tell first-year law students. Here's what they tell them. They say, when you win your case, don't say another word. Okay. Because many attorneys have talked themselves into victory and then forged the head and talked themselves into defeat. <laughs> you, did, you did a good job on this. I get the picture. I get the picture. Uh, Actually, she wasn't charged with overnight parking. She was charged with parking in India Point. You can't park in India Point. Well, see, after, she didn't know that because we, she, all right. Once more, you're going to get this, okay? <laughs> all right. All right. We have a very compelling argument from the mother of uh, Jennifer. Unfortunately, Jennifer, she may be a brilliant accountant, but she's not really a, a good tire inspector. She got two flat tires. She, she had ball tires. So she has new tires. The car was towed. I think that's more than enough punishment. So I'm going to dismiss the tickets. Thank you, sir. Matter is dismissed. Nice job. Thank you. This woman spent a great deal of time preparing that case. That was a great presentation. She had the documentation. She was very glib. She was very articulate. And then, of course, she was forging ahead. Uh, I was just joking, but she wasn't going to talk herself into defeat. But there's an example of uh, motherly love, and it uh, doesn't make any difference how old the kids are. Her daughter's a CPA. She's in court arguing for parking tickets. Where does it end? I don't know. Erica Davies. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening, Eric. Erica, you have a red light violation on Dean and Route 10. This was at 2.04 in the afternoon. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was going, so I wasn't really, I guess, paying attention to the light. I was trying to find where I could take a turn. It's a flagrant violation. You went right through the light. <laughs> no, and it's good driving record. I haven't had a ticket in probably 10 years. Oh, we know you're a good kid. <laughs> we know you're an excellent driver. Oh, it's never going to happen that again. One and we know that after you paid this $85, you are never going to go through another red light. I'm going to try not to. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> It was a very stupid thing I did. So you're pleading stupidity? <clears throat> you don't communicate with him any longer? No, because he has a retaining order against me. Veronica, you're charged with parking in the handicap zone. I am, Your Honor. I have a placard. Um, neglected to put it in the rearview mirror that day. It was in the glove box. Your handicap placket was in the glove box. Yes. I see. And, and I do have that. So your, your, your defense is that the parking enforcement officer had the audacity <laughs> to give you a ticket without checking your glove box No, first. not at all. It was a very stupid thing I did. So you're pleading stupidity. Yes. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> All right, Ms. Carney, I, obviously you have some kind of a physical disability. I'm aware of that. And if you're, um, I hope you don't take offense at some of the things I say. Uh, Not at all. What I do here is, you know, I, I was explaining earlier that for most of you, this is your first time in a court of law. You know, you don't go to the f uh, federal court. You don't go to the superior court. And when you come in here, it can be a, tim it could be a real intimidating experience for most people. Right, you got Inspector Quinn with that big gun. You got a judge with a robe. You got you got oak paneled courtroom. So it's an intimidating experience. So what we try to do is we try to make it less intimidating, and we inject a little humor into the proceedings, not to detract from the seriousness of the offense, obviously. Yes. 
Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay, so do you want to go do five days at the men or women's reformatory? <laughs> the matter is dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor.